Hi everyone, welcome back to this Lightroom CC training course for beginners. My name is Jesus Ramirez and you can find me on Instagram at jrfromptc. In this video, we're going to discuss the effects, detail, optics, and geometry panel. Before we get started, I want to point out that this is a training series. If this is the first video that you watch, then check out the description for the link to the playlist with the rest of the videos for this training series. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the notification bell. Okay, let's get started. The effects panel gives you control over clarity, dehaze, and vignette. The first adjustment in this panel is clarity, which has contrast to edge pixels. This effect can really make your images pop and stand out. However, with portraits, remember to keep the clarity to a minimum since it can damage skin tones. Dehaze removes haze from photos. This photo does not have much haze, but I will open a photo from a rainforest in Costa Rica with a lot of haze. By dragging the dehaze slider to the right, you will remove the haze that is found in this image. You could also hold Alt, option on the Mac, as you drag to reveal clipped dark pixels. Those are the areas that have lost all detail and are now pure black. Vignette allows you to add a vignette to your photo. Dragging the vignette slider to the left makes a black vignette. Dragging to the right, makes a white vignette. I also want to point out that this is the first lighter that also has extra options. That is what this light gray arrow in a dark box represents. If you click on it, it will expand the extra options for this lighter. These extra options lighters, unfortunately, do not have an animated tooltip explaining how they work like the parent slider. Feather allows you to set how blurry the edge of the vignette is. You can adjust the midpoint to determine how far the vignette edges get to the center of your photo. Roundness controls how round the vignette is. The highlight slider controls the highlights that will pop through the dark vignettes. In this photo, it is most noticeable in the sky. If you reset your vignette slider, it will disable the extra options. Next, select the detail panel. This panel allows you to increase the sharpening of your image reduce noise, and add film grain. When working on this panel, I recommend working in the one-to-one -one view. This allows you to view the actual size of the photo. You're viewing it at 100% and it will give you a better representation of the changes that you make with the adjustments in the detail panel. Start by increasing sharpening. If you hold Alt, option on the Mac, and click on that slider, it will hide the color. Sometimes it's easier to see the sharpening effect that you're applying if there is no color distracting your eye. Sharpening also has extra options. To reveal the options, click on this arrow. Radius adjusts the size of the details that sharpening is applied to. Photos with fine detail generally need a lower setting. Images with larger details can use a larger radius, but never push the radius too far since it can result in unnatural looking edges. Hold Alt, option on the Mac, as you drag to see an overlay that shows you how the adjustment is affecting your photo. Detail adjusts how much high frequency information is sharpened in the image and how much the sharpening process emphasizes edges. Lower settings primarily sharpen edges to remove blurring. Higher values are useful for making textures in the image more pronounced. Once again, holding Alt option in the Mac as you drag reveals an overlay that shows you the edges affected. Masking controls an edge mask. With a setting of 0, everything in the photo receives the same amount of sharpening. With a setting of 100, sharpening is applied mostly to the areas near the strongest edges. Press Alt or Option on the Mac while dragging to reveal a great visual representation of how this lighter works. Anything that is white will receive the sharpening effect, and anything that is black will not be sharpened. Much like a layer mask in Photoshop, white reveals and black conceals. And of course, we're hiding or revealing the sharpening effect. Next, we have noise reduction. This image has very little noise, so I'm going to open a different image. This photo of London has a lot more noise and it will do a better job showing us how this adjustment works. You can reduce the noise in this photo by dragging the noise reduction slider to the right. Holding Alt, option on the Mac as you drag removes that color so that the adjustment is easier to see. This is also true for the extra option sliders nested under the noise reduction adjustment. I'm going to click on this icon to expand it and reveal those extra options. Detail controls the luminance noise threshold, meaning how much detail do you want in the blurred noise. Higher values 
preserve more detail but can produce noisier results. Lower values produce cleaner results but may also remove some detail. Contrast helps you regain any contrast loss that might have occurred by increasing sharpening. This photo contains no color noise, but you could use this lighter to remove the color noise in your photos. The extra options are color detail, it controls the color noise threshold, lower values remove color speckles, but can result in color bleeding, higher values protect thin detailed color edges, but can result in color specking, smoothing, adds a softening effect to the speckled color tones. The grain slider adds a film grain effect to the image. Holding Alt or Option on the Mac does not do anything as you drag. The extra options are pretty self-explanatory. Size controls how big the grains are. And roughness controls the regularity of the grain, basically how rough or smooth the surface appears. Open the Optics panel. Optics gives you two options. Remove chromatic aberration and Enable lens corrections. I'm going to go to the film strip and open the Venice image and zoom into this area here. Check Remove Chromatic Aberration and you will see how the color outlines are removed. Chromatic aberration is usually shown as a magenta or green glow around the edges in your photo. Chromatic aberration is a common problem in lenses, which occurs when the colors are incorrectly refracted, bent, by the lens, resulting in a mismatch at the focal point where the colors do not combine as they should. As a result, the image can look blurred or contain noticeable color edges, especially in high contrast areas. I'm going to fit the image on screen so that you can see it all. Then I'm going to select Enable Lens Corrections, which corrects distortions in common camera lenses. If you're working with a RAW file, Lightroom CC will know the camera and lens that you use to shoot the photo based on metadata and will use a lens profile to compensate accordingly with any lens distortions and lens vignetting. You can tap on this icon to reveal the extra options. Distortion correction and lens vignetting both allow you to customize the corrections applied by the profile. The default value for both is 100, which is what the profile indicates as the proper compensation. But you can reduce or increase that compensation applied by the profile with these sliders. I find that the default settings usually give me a good result. Finally, we have the geometry panel. The geometry panel allows you to remove perspective distortions. This panel works great with photos with crooked horizons or buildings with vertical and or horizontal lines that aren't straight. In this photo, there's not a lot of distortion, so the change will be subtle but I will open a different photo that will give you a much more dramatic result. Lightroom CC has four upright modes that you can use to automatically fix perspective. Auto, Level, Vertical, and Full. I always try Auto first, since Lightroom CC does a fantastic job figuring out the adjustment that photos need. But try the others as well in case you find something you like. After applying an upright mode, you can adjust the image further by manually modifying the sliders below. They're self-explanatory, so I will not go through each one. You could also use the Guide Upright tool to draw two or more guides to straighten horizontal and vertical lines. You can simply click and drag lines that follow lines along your image, and Lightroom CC will automatically make the adjustment. I'm going to go back into the image that we have been working along this training video. By the way, you can press the backslash key to see the original photo and press the backslash key again to see the edited photo. As you can see, this is a much better looking image and it was all accomplished by dragging a few simple sliders. In the next video, we're going to talk about crop, heal, targeted adjustments, and presets. If this is the first video that you watch, remember that we have a complete series. There's a link to the playlist in the description. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you again in the next video.